माय नेम इज डॉक्टर बी सी पटेल चीफ सॉइल हेल्थ स्पेशलिस्ट भावनगर एंड प्रोफेसर कॉलेज ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर पार यूनिवर्सिटी गुजरात इंडिया सो टुडे द टॉपिक इज सॉइल पी एच एंड न्यूट्रिय अवेलेबिलिटी एंड यू नो दैट सॉइल पी एच मेजर विद द हेल्प ऑफ द पी एच मीटर so soil ph is the foundation of soil fertility soil ph is a master variable in the soil it play important role in soil in biological chemical or even physical in some instances managing soil ph is a critical part of a soil fertility plan <clears throat> it has been observed that soil reaction play five what a role in determining the nutrient availability for the plants soil ph affects nutrient available for plant growth in highly acidic soil aluminum and manganese can become more available and more toxic to plant while calcium phosphorus and magnesium are less available to the plant in acidic soil in highly alkaline soil phosphorus and most micronutrient become less available the soil ph also influence plant growth by the effect of ph on Activity of beneficial microorganism. So microorganism also requires the soil pH six point five to seven point five. When the soil pH acidic or alkaline, then the population of the microorganism has been declined. So it is a digital pH meter. So we can measure the soil pH. so i told that desirable soil ph range for optimal plant growth varies among crop generally soil ph 6.6 6.0 to 7.5 is acceptable for whole most plant in as most plant nutrient become available in this range generally 6.5 to 7.5 so soil ph can be determined by mixing soil sample with water and then measuring the resulting aqueous solution so soil ph what is it so it measure the acidity or alkalinity of the soil and it measure the concentration of hydrogen ion in the soil solution so when there is a 7 ph then it is neutral when the soil ph is declined from 7 then increasing the acidity whereas when this soil ph is increasing from 7 8 9 then increasing the alkalinity so i told that the ideal soil ph for the plant growth is 6.5 to 7.5 or 6.0 to 7.5 so the figure 2 indicate that the effect of soil ph on nutrient availability so you can see here the majority of these nutrient nitrogen phosphorus potassium sulfur calcium magnesium available at 6.5 to 7.5 ph range whereas the iron manganic boron copper and zinc are more available at 5.5 6 ph as compared to the alkaline ph but the molybdenum microbial exception and it is more available in alkaline range plant nutrient availability plant nutrient availability the macronutrients such as nitrogen phosphorus potassium magnesium sulfur with phosphorus as an exception are more readily available in a ph range of 6.5 to 8 the micronutrient however i are available in slightly acidic ph of 5 to 7 i told that these are the optimal range in which nutrients are available to plant in favorable quantity availability become less outside this ph range is the molybdenum micron availability decrease in alkaline condition also nutrient element of iron copper manganese zinc and nickel are tightly bound at alkaline ph and hence they are more readily available in lower ph levels this can 
induce toxicity symptom in plant in acid soil so when the soil ph of the acidic soil is 4 4.5 then uh, toxicity of the manganese and iron and aluminum we are fine so soil ph and neutral albedo so i told that at neutral ph 6.5 to 7 ph nitrogen phosphorus potassium sulfur are more available calcium magnesium are also available at slightly alkaline ph and it slightly acidic soil ph iron manganese boron copper and zinc are available and i told that molybdenum are more available in alkaline range of soil ph so here when the soil ph is acidic then major nutrient deficiency we are observing similarly in alkaline soil trace element deficiency that is micronutrient we are observing therefore suppose you grow the crop in alkaline or acidic condition then we should have to apply the micronutrient more that is 25% than the recommended dose because they are less available in alkaline soil then effects of abnormal soil ph on crop production so you can see here the optimum ph range 6.5 to 7.5 so suit and root growth for plant is better here you can see the root growth root growth more biomass so more uptake of the nutrient when there is abnormal ph either acidic or alkaline then you can see the grow root growth and also the plant growth so optimum ph range requirement for the optimum growth of the plant in crop production we should have to maintain soil ph between 6 and 7 some crops are more sensitive than other soil ph this tell us that at a soil ph of 5.7 on yield is 83 here you can see when the soil ph is 5.7 then the corn yield corn means main yield is only 83% of its potential but here you can see when you keep the soil ph 6.8 then the crop yield potential is 100% here here you can see that when there is acidic condition 5.7 5 then 4.7 then crop yield potential decline for corn wheat alfalfa and soybean so here you can see in figures 5 the optimum soil ph requires 6.8 for the 100% crop yield potential then buffering capacity buffering capacity retains the ph of the soil to resist the change in soil ph is called buffering capacity soil with higher cation exchange capacity possess good buffering capacity which in turn can resist changes in ph so clay soil have considerable high amount of cation exchange capacity than sandy or silty soil so in black soil the clay particle is greater so cation exchange capacity is greater so buffering capacity is higher but in silty soil or sandy soil cation exchange capacity is lower because we have the less clay particles and more sand and silt particles so the buffer buffering capacity of that soil silt and sandy soils are lower in an alkaline or basic medium the concentration of hydrogen ion is low hydrogen ion will come compete less with the other cation for exchangeable site and more base cations will remain on the particle exchange sites thus the cation are less susceptible to leaching in alkaline condition 
These processes occur in reverse in acidic medium as hydrogen ion exchange is the base cation from the exchange side. This nutrient are released in the soil solution which is either taken by the plant or incur leaching losses. The cation exchange capacity depends upon clay and humus content. So when the cation exchange capacity is low in your soil, then we should have to add more organic matter in soil. So the cation exchange capacity of the soil is increasing. So here you can see that sandy soil, the cation exchange capacity is less than 4. Hilt loam soil, 8 to 22. And clay soil, 18, point, 18 to 30 cation exchange capacity milli per 100 gram of soil. So that is why black soil are more fertile because it contains more clay particle and it has a higher cation exchange capacity and more buffering capacity. So in black soil, when we are adding the acidic fertilizer or alkaline fertilizers, then there is a less fluctuation of the soil pH. But suppose you take the sandy soil, and you apply continuously the acidic fertilizer ammonium sulfate urea, then there will be changes in soil pH because it has less buffering capacity. I told that the cation exchange capacity of the sandy soil is low, so obviously it has low buffering capacity. So changing soil pH. Some fertilizer can change soil pH and increase or reduce the amount of nutrient available to plant. Fertilizers such as crushed sulfur and some ammonium nitrogen fertilizer lower pH and make soil more acidic. And therefore, you know that uh, when there is an alkaline soil, the pH is 8, 8.5, then we are recommended to the farmer that you should have to use elemental sulfur or ammonium sulfate or urea, so which can help in reducing the soil pH. Then fertilizer and soil acidity. Soil acidification is natural process in high rainfall environment where leaching slowly acidifies soil over time. So where there is a high rainfall, then basis materials has been leached out and the dominant ions are aluminum, iron and manganese. So soil becomes the acidic. Intensive agriculture can speed up soil acidification through many process increasing leaching, addition of fertilizer, removal of produce and build up of soil organic matter. Of all the major fertilizer nutrient, nitrogen is the main nutrient affecting soil pH and soil can become more acidic or more alkaline depending on type of nitrogen fertilizer use. Nitrate based products are the least acidifying of the nitrogen fertilizer while ammonium based products have the greatest potential to acidified soil. So in acidic soil, we should have to use the nitrate fertilizer and don't use the ammonium based fertilizer. Otherwise, it increases the acidity of the acid soil. The importance of buffering in agriculture the buffer solution can be broadly classified into two types. They are acidic and alkaline buffers. The solution are used to maintain acidic condition. <coughs> the stabilization of soil pH, so the regulates plant nutrient availability. So buffering capacity is very, very important. The amount of amendment required to change in soil reaction, calculation of amount of amendment necessary to affect a certain change in soil reaction. When hydrogen ion in the soil solution are neutralized by lime, hydrogen ion from soil surface are released into the soil solution to maintain equilibrium and resist increase in pH. So better buffer soils are slower to acidify but require more lime to lift pH when they do acidify. So oh, here you can see that uh, the wastage of the when the soil pH is 4.5 then fertilizer waste is 71 percent but 
when the soil pH is 6.5, then wastage of the fertilizer is zero percent. And therefore, we should have to keep the soil pH 6.5 to 7.5. So whatever the fertilizer we are adding in soil, that have the higher efficiency of particular fertilizers and the nutrient present in fertilizer that are available to the plant and we are getting the higher crop production. Therefore, we should have to maintain the optimum soil pH 6.5 to 7.5 for utilization of the uh, maximum fertilizer to the plants.